Hello, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, depending on whichever part of the world you are tuning in from. I'm so excited to be with you this morning as we take another fresh new look at the financial market. Um, before we kickstart the session, let's run through our daily routine just to quickly confirm that we are all on the same page. So if you can see my screen and you can hear my voice loud and clear, please let me know in the comment section by typing in hi. So this will give me a positive feedback that we are good to go and then we can kickstart the session. Thank you very much as I look forward to your feedbacks. Okay, so let's see what we have here. So I can see a handful of comments from Nikki74 to Panigal. Good morning to you guys. I can see 1918. Um, I can see Tian Long 79. Good morning to you. Tisha, how are you doing today? Good morning to you. Um, hello, Carrie. Yes, yes, it's a leap day. Thank you very much. Good morning to you, Carrie. Um, thank you very much for that feedback. And Maria Cinda, good morning to you too. Glad to have you around with us. Is that all we have here today? Okay, I think so. So I would rather take this as a positive feedback that we are good to go this morning. And it's on this note, I welcome you all to yet another promising edition on the Extra and Speed Life Technical Analysis Session, your daily dose of financial insights and trading strategies. Um, well, it has been quite an interesting week for us all so far this week as um, we've been doing fairly well across the assets on our watch list. Um, since the week began, we have been monitoring the um, US All Sport, the US Tech 100, the GBP USD and of course the XAU USD. But um, from this list, I can tell you for free that the US All Sport has been the most profitable asset on our watch list. Though we've had some uh, profit taking on the GBP USD, the XAU USD, and of course the US Tech 100. Um, well, we shall be looking at how we will be managing this position and of course strategically positioning ourselves for the next move. And another thing I would like to emphasize here is that today is the last trading day of the month of February and we know how crucial and important such days are when it comes to preparation as market participants will be rounding off their um, portfolios ahead of the new month. So it's it, it's very crucial to highlight the significance of days like this as these days often witness heightened volatility and market activities as traders and investors rebalance their portfolio, close out positions and prepare for the new month ahead. So during our technical analysis session today, we will be delving into um, how um, what is going to be happening today and how trading activities is going to impact the market dynamics. Understanding these patterns can help us to make more informed trading decisions and capitalize on potential opportunities while mitigating risk. So, in fact, I have very interesting trading setups that we will be using to do so today. So, I encourage you not to miss out on these ideas. So, grab your favorite beverages and stay tuned in so that you don't miss out on this one. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, you're highly welcome on board and I'm very excited as always to have you around with us this morning. And one of the things you might be thinking at this juncture is what is this all about? What is all this session all about? Well, to simply put, as technical traders, we usually gather here every day coming together as a community and engage in follow-ups and reviews of our current trading positions in preparation of the New York session. Uh, this session happens on a daily basis, 
10 a.m. UTC, 11 a.m. West African time. And I recommend that you stay tuned in so you don't miss out on the insights that we will be sharing. And it's important for you to note that my aim here is to equip you with the knowledge and skills necessary to make informed trading decisions independently. The more time you spend with us in this community, the better you will become at comprehending our analytical approach and utilizing the information gathered here to enhance your own trading decisions and strategies. So once again, I extend a warm welcome to you and I encourage you to actively engage in the comment section so i can see a couple of more comments here let me acknowledge you guys you guys are wonderful um broken brain good morning to you sg788 i can see you you're welcome maria cinder um jojo84 and mimi thank you for the positive energy in the house so with that being said here we will be diving right into the business and as usual um, the first thing we normally do is to keep tabs with the fundamental factors that is likely going to be influencing the market sentiments today and we all know how important these fundamental factors are as they often manifest on the charts in technical patterns and price movement. Now, by monitoring the economic calendar, we can identify potential correlations between key economic releases and specific technical patterns on the chart, hereby giving us valuable information needed to position ourselves in such a way that we can capitalize on any potential move um, and even timing in, um, prior, during, and even after this economic event. Now, uh, based on the asset we have been monitoring since the beginning of the week, we have been focusing on economic features from both the United States and the United Kingdom economic docket. Um, so far this week, we also included some media economic features in the absence of no high impactful event to have a broader view into what market participant will be looking forward to now so far this week we've had some interesting situation that have gone through and this have influenced the market dynamics in one way or the other now before i go into the events for today in fact i have a slide prepared for us all where i want to be sharing with you an outlook into what has happened so <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me please into an outlook into what has been going on so far this week and how it had played a major role in the um, sentiment in the market so give me a moment let me share the slide with you Uh oh, unfortunately, I'm not sure what is happening here. I can't, um, I'm having technical issues sharing the slide. Um, but um, let me just run through what I put down so that um, we can have an idea into how we will prepare for today. So, um, through the course of the week, we had some speeches, some Fed speeches from Fed official speeches from Boston Fed, um, New York Fed. And of course, the Federal Reserve Governor, uh, Michelle Bowman. And um, from, let me read according to how they said it, how, how the, I'll quote what they said here. So, Boston Fed President Susan Collins said, and I quote, I believe it will likely become appropriate to begin easing policy later this year. She went on to further add that when this happens, a methodical forward-looking approach to reducing rates gradually should provide the necessary flexibility to manage risk while prompting stable prices and maximum employment now obviously this is she's telling us that interest rate cuts will not start until later this year so what this simply means here is that we will be having interest rate 
high for an extended period of time. Then the New York Fed President John Williams stated that, um, state and I quote, while the economy has come a long way towards achieving better balance and reaching our 2% inflation goal, we are not there yet. So inflation is still very sticky there. That's an emphatic statement we have there. Williams had that he would need to assess the data, the economic outlook and risk in evaluating the appropriate path for monetary policy that best achieve their goals. So what this simply means is that the decision will be based on the data that comes out. Now, on Tuesday, we also saw the Federal Reserve Governor, Michel Bowman, who said here that there is no rush to cut rates, giving upside risks to inflation that could start stall progress or cause a resurgence in price pressure. She went on to further say that inflation will decline slowly, adding that she will remain cautious in our approach to consider future changes in the stance of policies. Now, from what this Fed officials have said, the major highlight we can come from this is that inflation is still stickier in the U.S. economy and that interest rate will remain high for an extended period of time, secondly. And thirdly, interest rate cut is not likely in the month of March. So as a result of these, um, interest rate speculators have priced out a federal rate cut in March and May, and for June, the halts of a 25 basis point rate cut are currently at 49.7%. Now, in addition to all of this, we also witnessed some um, events yesterday, like the US Durable Goods Order, which dropped by um, 6.1%, 6, 6 which is not commendable at all. We also witnessed the gross domestic product analyzed for quarter four, which um, which was reported at 3.2 percent year on year, slightly below the preliminary estimate of 3.3 percent. And though it's below expectations here and um, below the previous month, which was at 3.3 percent, um, though there was an expansion which further emphasized the resilient nature of the U.S. economy. Now, the U.S. retail sales inventory rose by 0.3%, another positive data we have there. And of course, the home price index also rose by 6.1%. The U.S. new home sales rose by 1.5% too as well. So these are very, very robust data that supports the idea that the U.S. economy continues to become to be resilient. Now, for today, Thursday, February 29, um, we have a couple of high impactful events. So I had to include some media economy features too as well, which we will be looking into. So I will be taking the most important one um, on this list. So the first one here is the U.S. core PCE. Hold on a second. Um, the U.S. core PCE, which is um, known as the personal consumption expenditure, is coming up in about um, three hours from now. So you want to be uh, putting down that time so that we can be around to react accordingly and anticipate accordingly to this event. Now, for those of us who don't know what the core PCE is, well, this is a data that measures the average change over time in the prices paid by consumers for goods and services, excluding volatile food and energy components. Now, the anticipation of this data influences market sentiment as it provides insight into the inflationary pressure and the potential trajectory of interest rate. Now, being an inflationary gauge, market participants will want to look forward to this data as it will give an insight into how the Federal Reserve policymakers will be planning their easing cycle for the year 2024. So, a higher than expected core PCE figure may lead to concerns about rising inflation, prompting market participants to adjust their expectations for monetary policies. So, looking at the previous data here, we can see for the year on year and in month on month, we have 2.9% and 0.2% respectively, while the expectations is pegged at 2.8% and 0.4% 
respectively so we look forward to see what the actual data is going to be like on that one then another event we should also look at is the initial jobless claim which is released by the u.s department of labor and it is a measure of the number of people filing first-time claims for state unemployment insurance a larger than expected number indicates weakness in the u.s labor sector which obviously will reflect negatively on the u.s economy and is negative for the u.s dollar as well so looking at the previous data here the month of january came in at 201,000, and economists based on what is happening right now are projecting 210,000. so that's a little bit higher than the previous data we look forward to see what the actual data will be on that one then later on today we are going to be looking forward to a handful of speeches from Bostick, Goldsby and Mester. now we all know how important this is and we are being a policy maker their, their remarks is going to carry a lot of weight and considerably influence over the financial market um, their speeches will further provide insights into the bank's monetary policy stance, economic outlook, and potential future policy action. So, the anticipation of this speech can significantly impact sentiment as market participants will closely analyze their rhetorics for clues about future policy direction. So, these are the events we will be looking forward to today. So, I encourage us all to mark out the timing so we can strategically um, anticipate this event accordingly and as technical traders we all know that the anticipation of such event as a way of influencing the sentiments in the market which obviously will reflect on the chart as price action now talking about price action let's delve into the business for today so the first asset we are going to be looking at this morning is going to be the US All Sport. Now on the US All Sport so far this week, we've done phenomenally well. As you will see, we have been buying this asset since the week began, making us scoop over um, 500 pips in profit on this particular asset. Now for those of you who missed out on our earlier session and for educational purposes, Let's run through what really happened at the beginning of the week and what led to the decisions that made us to buy this asset. Now, the first thing we observed at the beginning of the week was how price action was confined within the $76.50 level and the $75.87 area to emphasize the prevailing uncertainty in the market at that particular point in time. And usually, whenever we have a range like this, we exercise patience waiting for price action to either break out of the resistant line for buying opportunities or break down the support line for selling opportunities. Now, there is one thing we observe here on Monday while trying to decipher where price is likely going to break out of. We saw that price action spent most of the first the um the first eight hours of the week around the support line of that range had the 75 dollar 87 cent area and we begin to notice how sellers were finding it difficult to settle below that support line and looking at the structure closely we begin to notice the appearance and emergence of um, hammer candles which technically reveals that buyers are present in the market and this happened for about three hours look at we saw the second one here and we saw the third one around here to further emphasize that buyers may likely be taking over the market now with the situation here we did not wait for price to break out of the resistant line of the range at the 76 dollar 50 cent level instead we positioned ourselves right at the 76 dollar 20 cent area to capitalize on our first buy position for the week. Then we kept on adding more positions at the breakout of the $76.50 level. 
we also had it more at the breakout of the $77 area, uh, which of course on Tuesday, we got taken out of all the buy positions where we moved our stop losses to um, with over 200 or 300 pips in profits on that one. Then right here on Tuesday, we begin to um, notice the appearance of buying pressure again. So we said if this continues, we will be had in more position at the breakout of the $77.32. We also had it at the breakout of the $77.75 area. So it was a very, very profitable week for us all. At least the first half of the week, we were able to scoop in close to 400 pips, or over 400 pips on this one. Now, during our live session yesterday, uh, remember what we did here? We identified an ascending trend line, which we said we will be using to guide our trading decision. And of course, you see how this ascending trend line has supported the bullish buyers since um, Monday's trading session. And we agreed that as long as price remains above the ascending trend line, we shall continue to buy this asset. Now, we were at this crucial juncture during our live session yesterday where we did analyze and said we will be joining that uptrend move at the breakout of the $77.75 level. And then we also added one more had the breakout of the $78.50 area. And look at what we had here. The first buy position moved over 150 pips, while the second one moved over 76 pips. And of course, if you had moved your stop losses accordingly, like we always do in this community, when price moves very well in our favor, you must have been taken out with a considerable amount of profit on that one. So once again, well done and kudos to you guys. So at this point in time, you shouldn't be in any position right now. So going into the last trading day of the month of February and of course Thursday's New York session, how do we intend to capitalize on the next move? How are we going to continue buying this asset or are there chances that sellers could come in anytime today? Now, following the take out of yesterday's buy position, price action has since consolidated along the ascending trend line we identified earlier. Look at this beautiful consolidation phase here, just exactly around that ascending trend line we spotted yesterday, further emphasizing how crucial this juncture is for us. So, a lot of things is going on right now that is affecting this whole situation. Um, one of these factors is the Federal Reserve decision to postpone rate cuts, coupled with the escalation of U.S. haul stocks, which of course exerted um, additional pressure on this asset, taking us out of all the buy positions from yesterday. Now, the American Petroleum um, Institute API Remember, we talked about this yesterday, reported a significant increase in U.S. crude oil stocks rising from 7.168 million to 8.428 million barrels for the previous week. Similarly, yesterday, the EIA crude oil stock part reported a higher than anticipated figure with a rise of 4.199 million barrels compared to the previous week, 3.514 million barrels now this for me is a sign that supply is higher than demand the demand was unable to eat into the supply hereby um, giving us a rise in stock power and whenever we have a rise in stock power it shows that the commodity is surplus in the market and when this happens, our simple economy says that price will likely drop now will price drop to the downside following this um, um, this significant increase in stock power, how are we going to see the trend continuation happen? Now, if you look at the structure, you will see that the ascending trend line we identified yesterday has finally been broken to the downside. Now, the question as we head into today's trading session is, is this breakdown a true and valid breakdown or a false one? Usually, if it's a breakdown, true breakdown, we expect price to come back, retest the structure, and continue the downward momentum. And in fact, I already had a sell position triggered here. I'm currently running in a loss. But if you are here to take advantage of that opportunity, well, let's place a sell stop order 
below the $77.75 area to continue the downtrend if ever price does a retest of this ascending trend line. So that is one scenario we are looking at. And of course, if we consider the Fed's officials' emphasis on delaying interest rate cuts, um, this development may raise concerns regarding economic growth and subsequent oil demand. Now, if interest rate remains high for an extended period of time, it simply means that the dollar will become expensive for other currency assets to buy. And considering the fact that the U.S. oil is a U.S. denominated commodity, it becomes expensive for um, investors and market participants to buy, and which may result in um, a low demand. And when there is low demand, what happens? Uh, price uh, because of price is high, there will be low demand, and when there is low demand price definitely will drop. So how is the market going to react to this current market dynamics that we have right now? Is it going to react positively in favor of the US oil or are we going to be seeing price nosedive to the downside today being a result of profit taking activities as market participants take off some of their positions of the market? Now today market participants will be closely monitoring the US core personal consumption expenditure index which of course is an inflationary gauge for insight and potential trading opportunities now if it is higher then it shows that interest rate is likely going to be higher which will further um, support uh, a bearish bias so so the identified levels here is going to be our guide for today as you will see our center of focus for today's trading session will be between the $78.50 level and the $77.75 area where depending on the direction of the breakout will give us an idea into where price is likely going. So if price action can go ahead to break out the $78.50 level, then price is back above the ascending trend line giving us beautiful opportunities to buy and then we could add more buy positions to our existing trade if price action take out the highest point for this week at the $79.25 level. So that is how we are going to be managing a bullish bias on this asset today. So let's mark out these levels and be on standby to capitalize on this opportunity. However, if the market comes into the trend line here and retest the structure, how we begin to see continued selling pressure as buyers find it difficult to climb back above the ascending trend line, this will welcome selling opportunities and we could have more sell positions at the breakdown of levels such as the $77.75 area as you will see here and the $77 level and of course our key level at the $76.50 area and finally the lowest point for this week at the $75.87 area. So you can see how crucial that ascending trend line is going to be guiding our trading activity for today. So you want to be marking out the trend lines and key levels on your charts as we will be using them to guide our independent trading decisions. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to let me know in the comment section. So as always, I will be taking the next 5-10 seconds off to see if there are any questions before we move on to the next asset on our watch list. Hello, um, Raman Bhatti, Bismarck, and Benny Black. Good morning to you. Guys, you guys must be new with us here today. I'm very glad to have you around with us. So, in the absence of no further questions, I want to assume that we are all on the same page. And in that regard, let's move right into 
the next assets on our watch list. So the next asset we are going to be looking at this morning is going to be the US Tech 100 popularly known as the Nasdaq and of course you will see that since the beginning of this week the market has been very choppy and I did emphasize the reason why this is in the in the last couple of editions on the extreme speed live technical analysis session and I did talk about the fact that price action is at an all-time high and when price action finds a new high it usually take um, some time before price action acclimatized to that zone and this is always as a result of fear from those who had enjoyed that bullish momentum and at a point out of fear they would likely want to be taking some positions off the chart due to the fear of um, a crash anytime soon and this mentality usually reflect on the chart as choppy market conditions retracement phases and consolidation phases as well and if you look at what has been happening since price action tested the all-time high at the $18,045 area you will see that the market has been range bound um, since um, last week um, last week uh, Thursday so it's over a week now the trading trading condition has been more or less choppy and confined within the 18,045 level and the 17,875 level to emphasize the um, prevailing uncertainty in the market at this point. Now during the course of our trading week we had some opportunities of buying after identifying a range between the 17,940 and the 17,875 level at the beginning of the week. So we were more of buying this asset, looking out for buying opportunities at the breakout of this resistant line here. Though we had a couple of buy positions, but it did not do well at all as they keep coming back into our entry point, taking us out at break even, as you will see here. And not until a couple of days ago, we joined this bearish momentum below the 17,900 level, which happens to be our key level. And you know how we use our key levels in this community. As long as price remains below the key level, we obviously want to be looking out for patterns and structures that support the idea of selling this asset. And for the fact that price was still trading below this descending trend line we marked out yesterday, we decided to continue selling so we said we will be adding more sell positions at the breakdown of the 17,875 which of course got triggered and in fact if you missed out on that opportunity you will see how the market came back to retest the structure to continue the momentum to the downside. So presently we have two minimum of two sell positions running in profit right now and for those of us who capitalize on this opportunity well done and kudos to you so at this point we have the first sell position running with about um, 80 pips in profit while the second sell position is running with about 55 pips so we have a total of 130 pips in profit so at this juncture, it is appropriate that we move all our stop losses and secure the current sell position. And I'm of the opinion that the area around the second entry seems most appropriate to move all stop losses to. And always remember that we do want to be given enough breathing space for price action to move around. Now, with a well-secured position at this juncture, and especially as we anticipate the end of the month, and of course, major U.S. macroeconomic data today, we may likely be seeing profit-taking activities at least happen for today, leading to strong traction to the downside. However, before we conclude, let's quickly take a look at the daily time frame to have an holistic perspective into what is really going on in this market and what we actually saw at the beginning of this 
week so right here on the daily time frame what we did at the beginning of the week was to consider the character and nature of price action since the month of september of last year and if you look at this closely you will see that it is obvious that price action has been very bullish and when we connected the series of higher highs we have the resistant line of an ascending channel as you will see here and then when we connected the series of higher lows we have the support line of this ascending channel now price is trading within the ascending channel it makes a lot of sense to continue to look out for buying opportunities however within this ascending channel was this ascending trend line which we said it's going to be playing a major role in guiding our decisions for this week and you know how we treat our ascending trend lines in this community as long as price remains above them we will continue to buy and the only condition that will make us sell is for the trend line to be broken to the downside now zooming into the current structure and looking at what has been going on in this market in the last couple of weeks you will see that the market has been consolidating confined within the 18,100 and the 17,615 to emphasize the indecision at this point. Now with the observation of this range we had our key level situated at the 17,900 which beautifully shares a confluence with that ascending trend line. So with a confluence between the trend line and that key level we decided that above this confluence if we can see patterns and structures that supports bullish idea we will buy and that if price breaks down both the ascending trend line and that key level had a 17,900 we shall be selling and of course look at this in the last couple of days we have been selling as price action remains below our key level and the ascending trend line now with the situation we have here you would agree with me that we are at a crucial juncture and the appropriate question we want to be asking right now is will the bearish momentum continue to the downside or will this turn out to be a false breakdown and in fact if it's going to be a continuation to the downside we are looking at um, over 250 pips to a minimum of 250 pips to catch here and if price drops further then we can be looking at maximizing that bearish move however if price climbs back up the ascending trend line then we shall look out for patterns to join an uptrend move so i needed us to see how crucial this confluence is and how dependent we are on the 17,900 to guide our trading decisions for today so with this understanding on the higher time frame let's scale back down into our one hour time frame to position ourselves for the next move so as it is right now we have a sell position and i mentioned earlier that we should move all stop losses to secure the current sell position so right now i'm going to be marking out the lowest point price action has been for this week which is exactly at the seventeen thousand eight hundred and fifteen dollar level so you do want to be marking out this level on your chart right now as we will be using it to guide any um, selling opportunity if price action breaks down the structure since it is the lowest point for this week so we have a we have a support line here at the 17,815 so let's see if the market will break down if it breaks down we're looking out to add more sell positions to our existing trade however in as much as we're looking out for more selling opportunities here we cannot ignore the potentials the buyers also have in fact if you look at how price has reacted to the 17,815 since the later part of the new york session yesterday you will see <clears throat> that at every point in time price comes into this area we saw how sellers were finding it difficult to continue the momentum to the downside the same thing also happened about three hours ago as you will see giving us a situation where buyers are beginning to build some momentum around this area and in fact if we look at the nature of the last couple of candles you will see that we have something that looks like an hammer candle which technically 
um, it, uh, it reveals that buyers are present at this point in time. Now, if sellers are finding it difficult to break through the 17,815 and price continues to remain above the um, the 17,815, then we'll have no other choice than to consider buying. Now, where will be the most appropriate area or zone on level to buy this asset? Well, if we look at the structure and formation of price action at this point, it appears that price action is gradually transitioning into what may look like a double bottom structure which technically is considered to be a reversal pattern. Now whenever we identify a potential reversal pattern, the next thing we want to be doing is to mark out the neckline of that reversal pattern where um, we have something around um, the 17,000, um, let me call it the 17,000 885 or so let's see i think i'll prefer 890 so let me just label this one 17890 so we have a neckline marked out now now if we are going to consider buying we would like to see price action break out of the neckline of that pattern Retest of structure giving us good confirmation that buyers have come to stay. Now look at how the proposed neckline here shares a beautiful confluence with that temporary demand zone we identified at the beginning of the week. As you will see, this area is known to have um, strong buying power. As you will see, it was more of a buying niche at the beginning of the week. And in fact, when price broke down that zone, you saw how sellers struggled when they broke down that structure. So if it so happens that price action climbs back above this level, I'm of the opinion that we are within the buyer's territory and buying around that area will make a lot of sense. And if price goes ahead to break out of this descending trend line, breaking out of the 17,940, we will be adding more buy position, a further breakout of the $18,000 area, the $18,045 level, all of which we have buy stop orders uh, to capitalize and maximize on that bullish move. So let's see how the market is going to play out today. So we have structures marked out here. The $17,815 below this level is adding more sell position for us. And if price action breaks out of the neckline, had a 17,890, we look out for buying opportunities. So it's a simple trading setup we have here on the US Tech 100, where our center of focus is between the 17,890 and the 17,815, where depending on the direction of the breakout will give us an idea of where we are going for today so i encourage you to mark out those levels they are going to be serving as a key playing a key role in guiding our trading decisions for today so this is my simple view on the us tech 100 if you have any questions whatsoever feel free to let me know in the comment section so i will take the next 5 10 seconds due to the limited time i have to see if there are any questions before we go ahead into the next asset on our watch list and please use that time to mark out these levels on your chart. I see you, Rajas and Isaiah. Good morning to you guys. Glad to have you around with us this morning. So in the absence of no questions, I want to assume that we are all on the same page. And in that regard, we shall be moving right into the next financial assets on our watch list. <laughs>
So the next asset on our watch list for today is the GBP USD, an asset we reintroduced into our watch list this week after absence of trading it uh, for over six months or so. Now, as it is right now, price action continues to oscillate within the supply window we identified during yesterday's um, live session as there is a renewed demand of um, uh, demand for the US dollar at this point. So this is the um, sell window we identified yesterday, remember, and we said that if price comes into the structure and we begin to see persistent selling pressure, we will be on standby to capitalize on a bearish move and to join the bearish move, we identified the 1.26565 level to capitalize on that opportunity and since then have sold around this area through price action um, is giving us a loss at this point of about how many pips? I think about um, uh, just four pips loss on this one at this point. So we still have a sell position as long as price still remains within that um, um, within that sell window we identified yesterday and for those of us who still hold on to the sell position well done let's see how far this momentum is going to go and if you would ask me um this current consolidation phase we are looking at is as a result of the us january the, um, the personal consumption expenditure price index which is coming up later today has i think that um market participants um are are, are Staying and waiting for cues from the release of this data before initiating any fresh directional positions. Expectations that the Federal Reserve will maintain higher interest rate for an extended period of time due to the persistent inflation and resilient U.S. economy are likely um, to bolster the U.S. dollar today. And furthermore, a slight deterioration in the global risk sentiment is anticipated to favor the US dollar as well and constrain any upside trajectory for the GBP USD. Now, um, if you would ask me, everything, every fundamentals is supporting price action to go down. Now, it, yesterday we had um, the speech from the Bank of Japan's deputy governor, which I can't remember his name right now, where he emphasized that the Bank of England is not um, yet is not considering cutting interest rates anytime soon. Though it is a hawkish remark, but um, it has it has had no effect in the way market participants um, is behaving. So it didn't really have any effect on the market and um, everything is still looking very bearish on this one. Remember, we sold the GBP USD on Tuesday after price broke down this ascending trend line where we positioned ourselves right below the 1.26830 area here to join that bearish move. And I did emphasize here yesterday that this whole bullish momentum we saw as soon as price tested the lowest point for the week at the 1.26220 area may be a retracement of that impulsive move we saw here where we shall be looking forward to when this this retracement phase will culminate to inside the next wave of bearish momentum. Personally, I'm still holding on to a bearish bias, looking forward to more selling opportunities at the breakdown of the 1.265 and a further breakdown of the 1.26220 level will be welcoming more sell positions for me. So a bearish bias here on the JP USD makes a lot of sense. Now, in as much as we're looking out for bearish opportunities, we cannot ignore the potentials for buyers too as well. Now, if you remember, uh, on our higher time frame, we had this ascent descending trend line, sorry, marked out to emphasize the strength of the sellers in the last six to seven months. Now, let me quickly show you what things are looking like on the daily time frame so you can see what I am talking about. I think it's on the four hours time frame we saw that descending trend line. Let me go back to the four hours time frame. All right, so this is the four hours time frame here. Look at that descending trend line. 
And I said that the only condition that will make me buy the GBPUSD is for this descending trend line to be breached and broken to the upside. But as long as price still remains below that descending trend line, it makes a lot of sense for us to um, look out for patterns and structures that support the idea of selling this asset. Now, zooming into the structure on the four hours time frame, look at what has been going on here in the last couple of weeks. We can see an ascending channel. Um, look at the resistant line of the ascending channel and look at the support line here of the ascending channel. And we saw how the support line of the ascending channel was broken yesterday, as you will see here and price action appears to be coming back to retest the structure and since then we've continued to see selling pressure this for me is a good sign that sellers will continue to push price to the downside and in fact if we can see a breakdown of the 1.265 um, it will incite more selling opportunities here so i hold on to a bearish bias on this assets and the only condition that will make us considering buying this asset is for this descending trend line to be breached and broken to the upside so you can see how crucial this descending trend line is so i will encourage us all to mark it out on our chart as we will be using it as a reference point to guide our independent trading decisions so let's see how the market is going to play out from here so this is my simple view on the gbp usd if you have any questions or you need further clarifications feel free to let me know in the comment section so as always i will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds no 5 10 seconds <laughs> i have limited time if you have any questions let me know and i will be attending to them so let's see if there are any questions before we move on Alright, so in the absence of no questions, I want to assume that we are all on the same page. In that regard, let's move on to the final asset on our watch list. So the final asset on our watch list for today is the XAUUSD, my favorite asset, popularly known as the gold spot. And we've finally been taken out of all the buy positions from yesterday with a minimum half a hundred pips as we finally see some buy traction resume. And in fact, I have a couple of sell stop orders triggered at this point in time but before we go into the details here let's run through what really happened in the last couple of days that led to the decisions we made now remember since the week began price action has been very very choppy further emphasizing the level of uncertainty going on in the market at this point in time and if you remember at the beginning of the week i i emphasized that the fundamentals is supporting a us dollar growth due to um, higher interest rate for an extended period of time, um, high inflationary pressure in the United States, and of course, a resilient US economy, which makes the risk on sentiment in the market fair enough. Now, at the beginning of the week, it was more of a range-bound trading activity between the um, 
2035 level and a 2030 dollar area and we saw this um, lead to some buys and sell position which did not do very well and this extended into the 2040 and the 2025 dollar area now usually whenever we have a range like this um, it's a very big range of course so this will be suitable for long-term um, traders now usually when we have something like this we either wait for price breaking out of the resistant line of that range to give us an opportunity to buy or the breakdown of the support line of that range to give us an opportunity to sell and since the week began we yet to see any of this breakout happen and since we are considering um, an audience that involves day trading and scalping too as well we had the privilege of capitalizing on short term trading opportunities now during our live session yesterday we um, used this as descending trend line as a yardstick to guide our trading decisions where we were saying here that if price remains below the descending trend line we look out for selling opportunities and that's the only condition that will make us to buy is for price to break out of that descending trend line which exactly was what happened a couple of hours into the new york session and with our buy stop order above the 2030 dollar area we capitalize on that uptrend move and remember we have marked out a couple of levels more to maximize the potential of this bullish move we had a 2033 dollar 50 cent level we also had a 2035 dollar area all of which gave us significant profit and if you had moved your stop losses accordingly you must have been taken out of all buy positions with a minimum of 100 pips once again well done and kudos to you now as we prepare for today's trading session a lot of things comes into play here now first of all today is the last trading day of the month and we all know how days like this we usually see how um traders and investors rebalance their portfolios close out positions and prepare for the new month ahead and we may likely be seeing some profit taking activities happen today inciting price action to the downside i have a very strong feeling that price has a high chance of dropping further to the downside and if we look at it from a technical standpoint i showed you here yesterday how that area between the 2040 and the 2035 area had been a strong selling niche in this market for the last um, three, four, five months or so. And look at what has been happening here since last week, Friday. You can see how buyers have found it difficult to continue the momentum as every point in time price comes into the zone. We saw strong selling niche happen from that particular area, supporting the buying of the US dollar and from the fundamental perspective um, the upside potential for gold remains constrained and missed growing consensus that the Federal Reserve will prolong higher interest rates. This sentiment may prompt market participants to adopt a more tentative approach delaying aggressive directional bets until further clarity emerge regarding the Fed's monetary policy trajectory. Consequently, the spotlight will be firmly fixed on the U.S. Personal Consumption Expenditure Price Index, which is expected to exert a significant influence on the U.S. dollar market dynamics and consequently shaping the short-term trajectory for the price of gold. Meanwhile, the prevailing hawkish expectations surrounding the Fed underscores the importance of exercising caution before committing to further extension of the recent recovery. Now, in light of this development, what are the things we're going to use to guide our trading decisions for today? Now, like I did here this morning while trying to decipher what is likely going to be happening, I was able to identify this ascending trend line, which of course I have decided to use to guide my trading decisions for today. And the only condition that make me sell is for that ascending trend line to be broken 
And as a result of this, I had positioned myself at the breakdown of the $2,035 level to capitalize on the bearish move and a further breakdown of the $2,033.50 level had just triggered uh, my second sell position in this market. Now, for those of you who had missed out on this opportunity, well, it's okay. Let's see if the market may come back to retest the structure, maybe the $2,033.50 level or the $2,035 area, or it could even be the ascending trend line. But most importantly, what we want to look out for are signs that buyers are losing the momentum, which obviously will reflect on the chart as selling pressure may be transitioning into any form of reversal pattern like a double top structure, head and shoulder or rising wedge where the breakdown of the neckline will be all we need to join a bearish continuation. So let's see if the market will do a retest of this structure. If it does, let's be on standby to capitalize on that move. But if price continues to drop to the downside, breaking down the 2030, we will be selling more positions and a further breakdown of the 2025 level will maximize uh, this bearish momentum. So on this asset right now, I'm holding on to a bearish bias, looking out for more opportunities to capitalize on this bearish move. So um, let's be on standby to capitalize on this one, as you will see here. And the only condition that will make me buy at this juncture is for price to take out this um, buy sell positions around the 2040 where the breakout of the zone will be a very good opportunity to join a bullish move which I doubt will happen today. So at this point let's remain bearish and let's continue to guide this momentum to the downside. So this is my simple view on the XAUUSD for today. I hope I made myself clear and if I did um, that's good. But if you still need some clarifications, feel free to let me know in the comment section. So as always, I will be taking the next um, um, 5 to 10 seconds off to see if there are any questions before we start rounding off on today's uh, trading um, extreme speed live technical analysis session. So I will be taking the next five seconds while you can also use that time to mark out these levels on your chart as you will be needing them as a reference point to guide your independent trading decisions. All right, all right. So I can see comments from um, by Dolina, uh, who's talking about Dogecoin. I can see P7 on BTC USD. Unfortunately, we will not be able to take that those pairs. 
um, it's not part of the asset on our watch list for this week and I usually emphasize here that if you want us to treat an asset you want us to monitor an asset for a particular week try to be part of our Monday's technical analysis session where you have the privilege of submitting any asset you want us to look for the week and we shall monitor that asset throughout the course of the week so p7 by dolina i want to see you monday morning where you would be sharing with us what asset you want to look out for this week and in fact i'm already out of time so bear with me on this one i hope i made myself clear um, good morning, Safo Sons. I uh, trust you are doing very well too. So in the absence of no further questions, we have come to the end of today's technical analysis session. In fact, it has been a wonderful moment with you guys as I really enjoyed um, every single moment with you. And today we were able to attend to um, the four assets on our watch list, which includes the US All Sport the US Tech 100, the GBP USD, and of course the USD, sorry, the XAU USD. And during the course of the session, we were able to identify simple trading setup that we will be using to strategically position in ourselves for the next move. And I do hope you marked out these levels accordingly. If you had done so, well done to you. So all we just need to do right now is exercise patience and wait uh, for price action for the structures to mature and always remember that every decision we make in the financial market is more or less an educated guess until price action eats your tp target so with this understanding in mind you want to ensure you have a well-defined risk management strategy in place to mitigate against any risk on your portfolio for those of you joining us for the first time, I do hope you are able to gain one or two things from what we discussed here. If you did, um, you want to be part of our subsequent edition. Trust me, the more time you spend with us in this community, the better you get to understand our analytical approach and eventually be able to use the information gathered here to make your own independent trading decision. So it's on this note, I want to wish us all the best of luck. I look forward to seeing you same time tomorrow, 10 a.m. UTC, 11 a.m. West African time as we come here again to review how well these assets have been doing and at the same time prepare ourselves for tomorrow's trading session which promises to be another exciting one. As you all know, um, tomorrow is the first trading day of the month and of course the last trading day of the week. So it's a very, very important day for us to look out for and we may likely see some beautiful traction to capitalize on so you don't want to miss out on tomorrow's edition as well so see you all tomorrow i wish you all the best of luck trade smart trade consciously and do have a wonderful evening everyone bye, -bye.